There are 168 hours in a week. We go to church for one hour. What about the other 167? Cue this podcast. We're here to bring the church to you the rest of the week. I'm David Vogel, the Director of Communication here at Central Community Church. I'm Corey Broddle, the Director of Community. We've been to the one hour in church. Now welcome to the other 167. This is a special episode of 167 because we're just getting right out of Easter and it's been a really great week. It was a great celebration. Yes. First of all, did you and your family have a good Easter? We did. My brother came up from Louisiana. We oh. all got together. We partied. We had food. We had an egg hunt. It was great. Awesome. Well, we had good food, good family time, yep. and it was just really awesome having the whole body of Christ here mm-hmm. celebrating Easter together. Yes, church was amazing. We had a nice, really good crowd. It's so fun to see the the pews getting more full as we keep getting further and further into this year. And the music was great, but the message was great. Yeah. So we want to bring the message one more time yes. to you guys, the audience. Um, and this is a perfect opportunity for you to share it. There yep. might've been somebody who missed the Easter service. So when you're watching this, click the share button. So yep. your fans, friends and family can watch too. Yeah. I think it'll be a blessing to a lot of people. I love holidays. Don't you? I think probably my two favorite holidays are Christmas and Easter. But when you think about it, Christmas isn't really a holiday. It's more like a season, isn't it? I mean, and especially for those of you who love Hallmark movies, it starts in July. (laughs) On the other hand, Easter sometimes seems like just kind of an extra long weekend. It's kind of like it's a time that we kind of take a pause and we, that helps us get over the enduring from winter to summer vacation. The sad part is, is that a lot of times Christians believe the same thing. But I want you to know, my dear friends in Christ, the opposite is true. You see, if we don't have Easter, Christmas isn't anything. If we don't have a risen Savior, then Christmas is just a story about a little boy who was born in an out-of-the-way town. There was a grandfather one day. He was trying to get across to his children about the meaning of Easter. He was in the house, and he was looking out the window, and there was his four-year-old granddaughter, Julie, playing with her friends. He decided... I'm going to go out, I'm going to take some of those little marshmallow ducks or birds, excuse me, and I'm going to share them. So he goes out and he calls the girls and the girls come over to him and he gives each one of them these yellow marshmallow birds. And then he asks a question. He says, do any of you girls know what Easter is all about? Oh, one girl raised her hand right away. She said, I know, I know. That's when you go to the mall when you sit on the bunny's lap and then you tell him what you want for Easter. (laughs) Grandpa just kind of shook his head. But as soon as that happened, then the other girl raised her hand. And she said, that's not what Easter's about. Easter is when you hand eggs on the tree and then you wake up the next morning and there are presents under the eggs. Well, Grandpa's getting a little disappointed because these girls obviously don't know what's going on. And then his granddaughter, Julie, speaks up. Granddad, she says, I know what Easter is all about. It's the time when we celebrate Jesus being raised from the dead. You see, you remember, Granddad, that he died on the cross, and his disciples put his body in a tomb. Then they rolled a big stone in front of the tomb, and there were some guards that were out there to watch to make sure that nobody stole the body. Then, Grandpa, there was this big earthquake, and the stone was rolled away. Grandpa was just amazed. He was beaming with pride. And then his granddaughter continued. And as soon as the earthquake happened, everybody from town came out to see what was happening. And when Jesus came out, they knew six more weeks of winter. Stand with me out of respect for God's word. (coughs) 
As I read from Matthew 28, verse 6. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. This is God's word for God's people. Let's pray together. Father, help me today to stop looking for Jesus in the tomb and to start looking for the evidence of him in my heart. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Well, for some of you, if you don't know, you've probably figured out that Easter is the Super Bowl of the Christian faith, isn't it? This is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we celebrate it because he was dead and now he's alive. And the good news of that is this, because Jesus lives, all those who call on the name of Jesus will live also, amen? Amen. Now, there may be some of you here today that may say, whoa, 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 time out, Pastor Bob. I mean, really, how do you know that your religion is the right and true religion? I mean, there's so many different opportunities out there. How do you know? How are you so convinced that yours is the right one? And I would say, that's a fair question. And you might continue with, after all, Pastor Bob, don't all religions eventually lead to the right, to the same place? To that, I would say, no. Not all religions lead to the same place. In fact, the risen Savior says that there's only one way to heaven, and he's the way. Well, maybe we should take a look at this for just a moment this morning. How do you know that that's true? Well, humor me for a little bit, and let's take a walk. I want you to know that it is Jesus who sets us apart from all of the religions in the world. And so let's go and visit the tombs of some of the most famous, well-known founders of religion, okay? Here's the first one. When I call your name, would you please answer here? Mohammed, here. Confucius, here. Buddha, here. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He's not here, is he? He's risen. Now, I hope that you would ask me the question, well, how do you know that for sure? I mean, come on, get out. The guy was dead, and now you're telling me he's alive? Well, what's your proof? Well, let's look and see what the Bible tells us. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? We have proof because people saw him. In fact, at one time, the Bible tells us over 500 people saw Jesus at one time. You know what that means? Jesus is alive and we have proof. So if we want to know if this is the right religion, if this is the true religion, let's talk to the one who was risen from the dead. Let's find out what he says. And here's the first thing that he says. Jesus is who he claimed to be. I want you to think about that. Jesus is who he claimed to be. There's a story in John chapter 2. Jesus is in Jerusalem, and like always, he goes to the temple. When he goes to the temple, he doesn't like what he sees. You see, there are a group of men who are there, and they have turned the temple 
God's house of prayer and they've turned it into a place of thievery. You see, people would come in and they would buy things like the sacrificial lamb and they would exchange currency and when they got the currency back, they would rip them off big time. Jesus is angry because they've turned his father's house, who is a house of prayer, into something it's not supposed to be. So you know what he did? He turned over all the tables. He went around and there was money flying everywhere. There were ducks, there were geese, there were chickens, there were all kinds of things flying all over the place. And you know what? This made the people very, very angry. In fact, there was a group of men that pushed back against Jesus. And you know what they said to him? They said, by what authority do you do what you're doing? You want to know what Jesus said? Let's look in the Bible. All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Did you hear what Jesus just said? Jesus said this, I am God and my resurrection will prove it. A little bit later, Jesus was with all of his disciples. And they're really sad, and they're sad because Jesus is getting ready to leave them. And so he says to them these words, trust in me, trust in, you trust in God, trust in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I need you to know I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back so that you can be where I am. And then Thomas, who just wants to make sure and leave no doubt, raises his hand. Jesus calls on him, Thomas. And Thomas asked the question that everybody was thinking, but were afraid to ask. And he says, no, we don't know where you're going. And how do we get there? Now listen to what Jesus' response to him is this. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus did not say, I'm one of many ways, did he? He said, I am the way. So my dear friends, if you believe that there are many ways to the Father, to heaven, the Bible tells you, no, that's not right. There is only one way to the Father, and it's through Jesus Christ, the Son. You know what I think is really interesting when we talk about proof is this. Every time we write a check, oh, Oh, I wasn't going to say that word. Oh, nuts. You see, if I say that word next hour, every time we write a check, they're going to look at each other. What is he talking about? What's a check? <laughs> I just dated myself. Ugh. Oh, well. I'm old and I'm proud of it. How's that? But here's what I want you to know. I'm not old. Okay, <laughs> now. Every time you write 2021... You reference the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you realize that? Every time on the face of this planet, when somebody writes the date and they write down the year of the date, that is a reference to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because there was a before Christ and there was an after his death. That's what that means. The world proves that there is a man called Jesus and he is the only way to the Father. So here's the second thing that we ask. Jesus does what he promises to do. This ought to get you excited. Look at what the Bible tells us in Mark. They will mock him, spit on him, flog him with a whip, and kill him. But after three days, he will rise again. Do you remember what I read just a little bit ago in Matthew 28? Remember what it said? He is not here. He is risen. What's the next words? Just as he said. Jesus did what he said he was going to do. Do you realize the hope that that gives us as people of God? If Jesus did what he said he was going to do, that means that God will give you what he has promised to give you. 
do you realize that there are hundreds of promises in God's word? And because Jesus is who he says he is and he does what he says he is do, when you go through a difficult time and you feel like you're drowning, you can cry out to God and remind him of his promise. And God tells us, when you're going through difficulties, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. When we're unsure of ourselves, God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. God says, you don't have to be afraid. That's the good news, people. Jesus did what he said he was going to do. And because he did what he said he'd do, you can believe that what he tells us that he or who he is and what he has promised us to do, it will be done. Now, here's the good news. My past can be forgiven. Man, I just want you to soak that up a little bit. My past can be forgiven. Anybody in here got a past besides me? We all do, don't we? But you know what we all love? Don't we all love do-overs? Don't we love new beginnings? Don't we love that opportunity? I can start all over again. Oh, hey, I shot that and I slipped. Give me another chance. Okay, you get a do-over. Jesus gives us a do-over. But here's what I want you to understand. It's not a second do-over, third do-over, do-over. If you're like me, it's a 26th, a 27th, and a 28th do-over. And the Bible is very specific about what has taken place. Look at what it says here. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. You see, most people who live in the world today right now are stuck. They're spinning their wheels. Over 40% of them are living in fear right now. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but the media has done a very good job of keeping us in that fear. God is not a God of fear, but a God of power and might and strength. And you know what? God tells us, you don't have to live like that. Jesus was nailed to the cross, so stop nailing yourself to the cross. My past, my future, my present has been forgiven. For all who call on the name of Jesus, who are children of God, when God looks at you, you are squeaky clean because of what Jesus Christ did. You know what? Right now, you ought to look yourself in the mirror and go, I look pretty good (laughs) because of what Jesus Christ did on your behalf. Remember these words. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. No condemnation. When you go to Jesus and you ask him about the sins that you've had in your past, he's going to say, I'm not sure I remember or know what you're talking about. Because the Bible tells us as far as the east is from the west, he remembers our sin, what? No more. Here's the next one. My future can be secure. (laughs) Can you believe that? Your future can be secure. The greatest gift that you can give your family, the greatest gift you can give your children is the gift of knowing. Now, I know we don't like to talk about death very much, but I'm going to talk about death just a little bit. And what I want to do is I want to share with you, first of all, some, what some little kids thought about death, okay? Here's Gildo. She's eight. And she said, when you die, they put you in a box and bury you in the ground because, well, you don't look too good. (laughs) Stephanie, age nine, said, doctors help you so you won't die until you pay their bill. (laughs) No comment on that one. Marsha, age nine, said, when you die, you don't have to do homework in heaven unless your teacher happens to be there too. (laughs) And Raymond, age 10, said, a good doctor can help you so you won't die. A bad doctor sends you to heaven. (laughs) 
One of the things that we all know is this, we're all going to die, aren't we? The death rate is 100%. Every one of us here at some point in time in this life will take our last breath. And I don't want you to be afraid. Because you see, Jesus has defeated the last enemy, and the last enemy is death. You can know beyond a shadow of a doubt where you are going. You know what I love about the Bible? The Bible is so real. And here's what I mean. There's a man in the Bible by the, by, by the name of Job, and he asked a very important question. It's the same question that we ask. Here it is. If someone dies, will they live again? What a great question. If someone dies, will they live again? I want you to think of a time when you stood at the casket of a loved one. Maybe it was a spouse. Maybe it was just recently. As you gazed upon that loved one that is in the casket, do you remember the feelings that came over you? I know there's sorrow. I know there's disappointment. But I hope there's not hopelessness or fear or the feeling of being defeated. You know why? Because Jesus is raised from the dead. He tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And so the difference, my friends, is this. When I look at the casket of a loved one, you know what I always think? I'll see you later. This is not goodbye. It means I'll see you later. And the Bible says it's only for a little while. Two years ago, at this time, I was in the Holy Lands. I remember when we got to the garden tomb where Jesus was said to have risen from the dead. I remember as I got close to there, I just stood there and I was just like, oh, whew, whew. I heard songs about Jesus being read, raised from the dead in about 15 different languages. There was a group from China that was over there singing, Jesus Christ is risen today. There was another group over there from Russia, and they were singing, Jesus Christ is risen today. And I remember as I went into that tomb, I had to duck. And as I got in there, and I saw the place where the body of Jesus laid, I got to tell you, a tear started streaming down my face. But it wasn't a tear of sadness. It was a tear of joy. And the joy came not because of what I saw. The joy came because of what I didn't see. And I didn't see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I walked out of the tomb, when you walk out of the tomb and you look to the right, there's a sign right there. You know what the sign says? He is not here. He is risen just as he said. My dear friends in Christ, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks for listening to 167. Please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you're listening from. And to keep up with everything at Central Community Church, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to watch us record this podcast live, find us on YouTube. We think the 167 hours between church services are so important, and we hope you'll share this episode with your friends. Join us next week.